you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, how are you feeling? Is everyone okay after lunch? Okay, perfect. Great, like it. Um, so yes, uh, today's presentation, my, my presentation is going to be about uh, building a framework uh, that is going to be based on interactive application security testing. So based uh, after this talk, you will uh, understand how the IAST solutions work under the hood uh, and what results you can expect basically from them. Moreover, this talk is based on year of, of like previous year of uh, research that we've been conducting, um, and um, you will see some pretty neat stuff here. I hope so. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to give you a bit of background information about the um, research project and the company as well, and and myself. Uh, I'll tell you about typical uh, approaches uh, for, for vulnerability detection. You probably know uh, about, about those. Uh, then I'll briefly tell you about the goals that we had in mind when we started the research project, um, what was our approach and what architecture uh, came up during, the, during the, the our work, uh, what are our results and conclusions from, from, from the project and uh, even challenges that we faced uh, down the road. And some final words. So, uh, a bit about myself. I, I was already introduced. So, yes, like uh, 11 years of experience discovering vulnerabilities and like various different technologies, various different um, different um, types of software and hardware networks and, and stuff like that. Some of the vulnerabilities uh, are. Uh, that I discovered were um, are public actually, so you can check them out on on our advisors page. Um, a little bit about company. We are providing cybersecurity services from from the offensive side, so typical penetration testing, red teaming, and and things like that. But we also like to focus whenever we have um, spare resources or uh, some funding available. Um, we like to focus on um, research, uh, doing some uh, detection, uh, trying to invent some some new attack techniques, um, maybe new ways of, of of discovering vulnerabilities. And this talk is actually based on one of those research. If you would like to learn more how how we help our customers. There are a few case studies where you can um, uh, read about it. Yes, so in terms of the project, um, the research project that we, we started a year ago was inspired by actually uh, two papers. Um, first, first one was, uh, was the paper by a Portuguese guy, Miguel Felipe Batris, uh, who uh, Mm, described um, approach of detecting vulnerabilities with uh, having access to the operating system, to the to the application itself. So not only like dynamic scanning, not only static scanning, but something something combined. And the second one is uh, WP Garlic by uh, Krzysztof Zajonc, who is actually presenting uh, at this moment at the track one. Um, he used a technique, very, very innov innovative technique of discovering vulnerabilities in uh, WordPress plugins that we actually incorporated in our research to, to help us discover like better, let's say, attack service and in, in, in applications that we are um, focusing on. Um, the, the, the research is the huge part of the research was commissioned by uh, Luxembourg Armed Forces, so we are greatly have, uh, thankful for them, for, for their support, um, because it helped speed up the, the, the research and uh, yeah, come up with, with really great conclusions and, and nice results. So, you, you, you are for sure aware of, of typical approaches to discovering vulnerabilities, dynamic scanning, static scanning, dynamic, uh, trying to fire various different uh, attacks uh, into the application from, from like external part, external scanner, and then look for the potential um, strange behaviors like patterns and that could indicate the vulnerability. And we have a static uh, approach, which is basically scanning source code files and uh, analyzing them and then discovering vulnerabilities from this side. 
And the interactive uh, application security testing, this is kind of a mix. So basically, depending on, on how the specific work uh, under the hood, uh, the, the, the interactive part is taking advantage of both, uh, both things at the same time. And uh, this is basically uh, the core of what we, uh, what we were doing. So our initial goals for, um, for our project was to create an automated process for discovering vulnerabilities, um, but in a way that um, it's, it's like not like t typical scan, but we have some knowledge about the application itself. But this knowledge is not acquired um, by a person who runs the scan. So he, the, the person who runs the scan is not supposed to understand the security or understand the application. It's supposed to just be able to, to run it. Uh, and those are, those are the, like the, the initial goals that we had in mind when we started the project. We changed it, uh, we changed uh, a bit during, during the project because some of, some of them were not that easy to achieve, basically. Um, but yeah, one of the, one of the others was that we didn't want to have any pre-configuration, uh, that had to be in the place already in the application before we started scanning. Um, and the, the very important goal was to produce results with minimal false positives because th these days, like dynamic scanners, static scanners, they, they produce a lot of uh, false positives or just vulnerabilities that, the, like findings that they're not security relevant. Let's put it like that. <coughs> Okay, so uh, what, what's the approach of interactive application security testing? In a huge nutshell, it's to monitor everything. And by everything, I mean, I mean everything that may seem to be relevant. So a typical IAST um, architecture may look like this. We have on one side, we have our IAST solution with a dynamic scanner, so this is this dynamic part, and we have a vulnerability detector, something that is specifically designed just to detect vulnerabilities. But the way it detects the vulnerabilities is basically through monitors that you see on the right side. Monitors are attached uh, in some way to various different components of the application or the operating system or network that may be relevant uh, in terms of security. So for example, we have, yes, we have the internal network, inside the internal network we have the uh, operating system of the web application, <coughs> and we have plenty of different components like file system, processes, air logs, DNS scanners, some other servers, and on various, on, on various different, uh, different uh, components, uh, the IAST solution put some monitor to monitor these specifics like process, uh, uh, processes that are created uh, and look for some um, odd looking process, processes that could, for example, be indication of some like remote code execution, let's, let, let's say. <coughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so what, what, can we, what can we monitor? We can definitely monitor application response, like typical uh, dynamic scanners. We can also monitor standard error. Um, because some, some applications don't produce errors, errors into the uh, log files, but they produce to, to the standard error. We can monitor file systems to, to see if there are some files, uh, some new files that are created that look suspicious, that match our pa attack, pa uh, attack pattern. Um, we can uh, monitor um, error logs, uh, operating system processes, like I mentioned to you before. And network connections, maybe during some attack we initiated some network connection that could, um, to, could be indication of some like uh, SSRF vulnerability. E okay, and uh, in terms of focus, so uh, in our research we, um, this is actually one of the completely different thing uh, I think uh, that we, uh, that we started with because most of the typical solutions, they go, I would say, top down. <coughs> so they try to cover as many languages as possible and as, as many uh, applications as possible. We took a different approach. We decided that we want to go from bottom up, so basically focusing first on very specific 
framework inside a very specific language, like programming language, and it turned out to be CakePHP. CakePHP is like a framework <coughs> that helps developers to create web applications in PHP and then an easier way because it has some building blocks already um, uh, that could be used for, for, for developers uh, to, to, to create components faster. And this approach basically gives us uh, the, the advantage of knowing the application be uh, um, even without spending time of, of analyzing it. Because we know how the framework operates, uh, so we can extract the information from the framework uh, about the application itself, about the target application that we are actually uh, testing here. So we, we know about the routes, controllers, actions, and, and, and things like that. Uh, moreover, and this is part that we um, we used um, WP Garlic uh, from from Christoph Zion's approach. We don't scan over HTTP. We could. This is this is this this could be done, but we used the approach that uh, helped us <coughs> discover um, like oddly looking parameters, uh, input par user parameters uh, using using the method that I will show you a bit a bit later. Um, yes, so uh, because the uh, the primary the first framework that we were targeting was cake PHP, we named our solution cake fuzzer basically. So <coughs> the architecture of the solution um, that is uh, supposed to discover vulnerabilities with with interactive approach in mind has a few different components. These components, they, they, most of them, they act separately um, and they interact each other with, with various, various different, um, in various different ways. So first of all, we have monitors that I already talked to you about. There, this is a specific component that observes various different um, parameters of the um, operating system, application itself, and, and, and things like that. One, one important remark in our solution to simplify <coughs> the, um, the, 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 the approach and the um, implementation, we have the same, we have our scanner like Cakefuzzer on the same machine as the target application. The second second component is attack queue. This is component that is uh, focused only on taking the attacks from the queue and firing it, firing it the, the, these attacks uh, at the application. So um, this is um, this is actually part. Mo most of the solution is uh, is written in Python, but this specific part is written in PHP um, to target these specific frameworks in the PHP language. Next, we have a registry. Registry is responsible for storing the, the information from the, uh, from, from the results, from, from logs, and, and then detected vulnerabilities, uh, like fi potential findings. And we can use the registry, to, we can query the registry to extract the information about already discovered uh, issues. Next, we have the, the configuration. We, um, we, we, ha we have possibility to configure various different uh, aspects of, of the solution, like uh, concurrency, like uh, limits, like how, wh what part of application do we want to scan, actually. Um, and we, like we have a, separ a separate component for this. Then we have an instrumentation. This is very, very interesting part because <coughs> this is the part that allows us to, first of all, implement the, the, the attack technique that we, uh, we, we mentioned before to, to discover various different parameters. But this also um, is, is necessary to instrument the framework uh, in order to give us the information that we want. I will, I will, I will show you this uh, in a moment. And the last one is a fuzzer, uh, which, is responsible for, uh, which is responsible for extracting the information actually from the application, from the framework about the application, <coughs> and scheduling attacks that, uh, that are defined, uh, and uh, setting up monitors, so the, the monitors are looking for things that, that were interested uh, during, during the whole attack. The, the configuration part, um, the, the part of the configuration actually is uh, called a strategy. So the, the, our strategies is like the uh, specific types of vulnerabilities that we are looking for. And these are in, in JSON files. They, they are, they, um, yeah, well, for me, they look simple. <laughs> for you, maybe not. But 
in fact, they are divided in two parts. So first one is scenarios. So these are typical, let's say, payloads that you can run, you can you can send to the application to see and observe some uh, interesting behavior. Maybe maybe these processes spawn at some point. And then we have the scanners, and scanners are um, uh, detecting the, the, the payloads uh, in, in a certain way. So detecting if the paylo payloads were executed and produced results that we were expecting. And we have we have a few scanners. So here you have a result output scanner. So this is a typical scanner. The, the same way it works the same way as as typical dust scanners. It looks for the application output. <coughs> Uh, if it was produced, then we have um, log, fo log files content scanner. So this uh, this this scanner uh, detects the, the 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 like regular expression that is actually below it um, inside the log files of the of the application. Uh, then we have the results uh, errors like standard standard error, and the process output like we, we are actually looking for. Uh, we're monitoring the, all the processes that are <coughs> created, and we're looking for like specific pattern, like specific process that we're hoping to to see um, after some payload is um, injected into the application. What's pretty important is that all of these scanners they 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 are constantly working during the scan, and they are not attached directly. So this is not the way it, it doesn't work in a way that the attack is, is scheduled, the attack is executed, and then the, the scanner is looking for some uh, like process list. For example, the, the scanners are working constantly to uh, discover um, the vulnerabilities that they, they, they are defined. And the flow of the execution of the scanner is starts with the instrumentation process. The instrumentation process prepares the application, the application and the framework itself to launch uh, the attacks. Uh, we also disable some security checks that are not relevant for the vulnerability classes that we're targeting. And we are overwriting parts of the, well, like I said, web application itself and the framework as well. So the typical um, example of the instrument instrumentation is composed of three parts. So first part is overrides, patches, and the, the, the third one is copies. And the, uh, the, the, the example of the first one is like a typical, um, typical um, let's say, overwrite of a function call. We want to make sure that we um, know whenever the application issues, for example, a header request. So here you have a, on the first line, this is like a part, uh, part of the application source code. It has a defined header uh, function call uh, with some content in it. And what we want to do is we, we basically overwrite it. We overwrite this part of the source code with our custom function that we have already implemented. So we can monitor every execution of this function. <coughs> Next, the, the, the other part of the instrumentation is patching. And patching is, um, actually this is pretty sp kind of specific to, to, to um, PHP, but um, in our case, PHP has the, the ability to include files and then to extract the variables from this file. So basically, whenever you run include and some file, all of the file is going to be executed. And then you you have in the, the later parts of the code, you have access to all of the variables from this file. So we use this to our advantage. Basically, we include the application itself. And then we look for all of the variables that the application ha has defined. <coughs> Thanks to that, we have access to not only like the variables that are defined, but also to static um, methods that are uh, that the framework is using uh, itself. And this is a typical example where we can see where we're actually using the roots method of a router uh, class, static static roots method, and we can extract the the information about the roots of the application dynamically actually from the application whenever the application is running. So the application executed itself, it processed all of the information that was already there, um, defined by the application, the framework executed itself, and we can use this information, we can ex dynamically extract the information about roots from 
from the from the framework in this case. And the roots, they look like this. Basically, this is um, typical list. Well, typical. It's it's a list of regular expressions um, where. Um, you can you can imagine that whenever you have like a web application URL, there's a part of the path, and the path is uh, basically either matching or not matching certain endpoints, and the root list of routes tells us what is actually the attack surface of the application. So this is gives us like already a huge advantage. We don't have to crawl for all of the websites. We don't have to uh, look and to see if there, that there is all of the endpoints are um, presented in the um, application output in some menu or something. We have them dynamically extracted here. Then the next part is fuzzer. Fuzzer uses the instrumentation that was conducted there and extracts uh, extract it and st starts, not starts, but schedules the attacks and uh, sets up all the scanners. And here you have, um, well, yeah, simple example of, of uh, a few uh, attack strategies that are defined. And in this case, you can see that uh, here this, the, the, the cake fuzzer discovered 141 paths that w was actually based on the routes that, that it discovered from the application. So it discovered the whole attack surface of all paths, all endpoints is like four of 141. And it scheduled 141 SSRF attacks because we have one payload for SSRF in this case, in this situation, then it has scheduled some tw 282 for LFI and, and so on. Moreover, it scheduled like one scanner, it created one scanner for SSRF and, and so on. Then again, the once the, the, the fuzzer uh, scheduled the attacks, the, 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 the monitors are executed. So the monitors extract the information about what is supposed to be monitored, what types of component, what types of elements like of, of the operating system and the application itself. And they they look for these patterns that were defined previously in the strategy in the attack strategy and the scanners section. So basically, they look for certain regular expressions of like DNS requests or the process that that uh, that could be created based on our RCE payload. Um, next, there is the attack queue that takes all of the attacks that were defined in uh, in the queue and execute the, execute them one by one. And um, and during all this time, the all the all of the paths the, 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 they are executed. That all the attacks are executed against all of the paths that, that were discovered. And at the same time, monitors are looking for like abnormal behaviors, uh, things that could indicate basically vulnerability, like much much the, the, the regular expression pattern. <coughs> The attacking part is is the part that we uh, incorporated from WP Garlic, and uh, it's actually very very interesting in a way that um, in PHP all of the user input is presented in so-called global variables, and the example of global variables is underscore get. So all of the application, all of the PHP applications, and even like cake PHP applications, they use these variables to extract uh, whatever you type something in the uh, HTTP post body or, or URL uh, parameters. So what we did is basically we overwrite the um, these variables with our uh, array looking objects, and these objects they they behave almost like arrays, but they give us additional knowledge about the application. So first of all, we override the, the, the variables, then we include the application. We do the same trick that we, that we did before to extract the, uh, the, to extract the information from the application. But in this case, we're actually executing the, the specific attacks. The attacks are defined as this magic array. And once, uh, once the application starts actually executing, whenever there is, for example, a query like this, like select, uh, start from uh, users where login equals, and this is like a typical SQL injection uh, vulnerability here. Whenever there is part where the application requests from this get variable that, was, that we overwritten before, when, whenever it requests some parameter, our magic array detects it and it decides if uh, if we want to attack this specific parameter or not. 
So this has this this gives us the advantage that basically not only we have the access to a whole attack surface of whole paths that the application has uh, presented to us because we we injected to the code, but we also get information about all of the parameters that are in a specific um, application flow. Uh, depending on which parameters are provided, so whenever the new uh, parameter appears somewhere in the in the code, <coughs> we don't uh, we don't statically analyze the code, but we dynamically uh, detect all of the requests that are in the particular executions, and the ex executions change, so the different parameters are discovered in different um, executions of the scan of, of the attacks. So. <coughs> This is this is basically the part when uh, when our magic array if detects the, the login parameter it decides if uh, it wants to send th this payload or maybe this payload and at the same time monitors are observing the like error log files or or some other parts to to see if the payloads were actually executed on the database. And uh, the last part is extracting the results. We go to the registry, basically to registries uh, like a SQL a SQLite database at this point uh, that uh, that we extract information about detected vulnerable uh, vulnerabilities. We can also the, the uh, we, we also log the um, application responses, so so we can examine them after after the scan. Um, but yes, we do we do this through the registry. And the results uh, look like that. So because we don't uh, execute our dyna dynamic part through the HTTP, to produce meaningful results, we have to kind of recreate the typical request response type of um, communication. And this is, this is the way we do it. So we present uh, the, as a result, we present a few information. So first of all, yes, we, this is a one of the vulnerabilities that were detected, SQL injection, um, uh, from the SQL injection stra attack strategy. This particular payload was used during the attack, and this particular payload caused the application to um, to to uh, reach the vulnerable code and uh, generate some action that we detected. And this part is actually what we detected. And you can see that there is like a PDO exception, a syntax error, and SQL. And we see our payload uh, below. So in this case, the detection was based on the error logs. And this is the part where we kind of recreate the HTTP request uh, message, where we put uh, like a URL path, you, you put a we put a method, um, and we put the different variables uh, in a way that they would appear normally in the HTTP request. And in terms of current results, so our um, polygon, our, our testing ground um, was MISP. MISP is um, one of the biggest, I think, open source solution that is based on CakePHP, and it's used by by, by many organizations, CSIRTS, uh, um, like military, governmental, and, and other other instant, uh, international institutions, and um, and it's actually a pre pretty big project which helped us to to set the ground in, in a really nice way because we had to struggle a lot with it has a huge attack surface. There's like a, a lots of lots of paths and parameters and pages and so on. So our goal was initially to make sure that we uh, know, we understand all their vulnerabilities that are already in, this, in MISP. The Circle uh, guys, the, um, the maintainers of, of, of MISP, they do great job in um, uh, gathering all of the vulnerabilities that uh, that you, you you send to them if you discover any, and then fixing them. So there is a list of you know CVEs that 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 were in the previous versions of MISP. So we were hoping to we we took a few CVEs and we wanted to make sure that we we our solution can detect those just to have the proof that it 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 makes sense to to work on it and it may work actually in in real life scenarios. But it turns out that we discovered some unknown vulnerabilities during this process. So basically like zero days and, and the latest versions of MISP. 
um, which is pretty cool. Like, uh, yeah, seeing seeing the solution like research project working actually in action. So um, the on the left side there is the, the list of CVs that we were basically targeting to discover, and the solution was 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 able to discover it. And on the right side there is a list of uh, right now CVs that were like vulnerabilities that we, that we discovered during the scans. But they were in the latest versions of uh, MISP and not only uh, MISP. So, and there, there are a couple of few interesting, very interesting cases that um, shows basically how difficult vulnerabilities we can discover with this solution because of this technique, dynamic, dynamic, dynamically discovering uh, the, the vulnerabilities and in, in, in the ap application execution. And we, yeah, we don't have the time for it, but um, the SQL injection in CRUD is is very interesting, uh, very interesting case one. So, and, and whenever when we focused on the known vulnerabilities, we wanted to make sure uh, you remember the we wanted to limit the number of false positives. So this was one of the goals, and uh, in the scan from. Uh, mm, February, I think, we we ended up discovering like over 700 v v true positive vulnerabilities, but this included duplicates. So uh, some of some of the vulnerabilities from the source uh, source code point of view, they they the, the root cause of of, of some vulnerabilities uh, 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 is from uh, one specific place. It's from one specific place. The developers just need to fix this particular line or in this particular fi uh, file, and it's fixed. From the dynamic perspective, the same vulnerability can exist in many different endpoints in many different pages and then parameters, depending on how it's executed. And this was main cause of why we detected so many vulnerable, so many duplicates. Actually, at the same time, we discovered 15 false positives, which ended up being like two percent rate. And this is something that we still have to work on um, just to limit the number of duplicates or, or present them in a way that they are more, more digestible uh, to people who are um, well reviewing the results, basically. And we also uh, quickly noticed that the time of the scan is also a factor. So we had to implement, uh, like, set up a pretty, pretty strong um, EC2 on AWS, which uh, at the time it discovered, like I told you, like over 2,000 2, paths in MISP, um, scheduled 80,000 attacks. They defined some scanners and so on, and it took over uh, almost three hours uh, to for the entire scan to finish. So, what what are the benefits of uh, of our approach? So, first of all, the, we built it in a way that it can be extended to, to other frameworks. There's not not a lot of uh, impact if we just focus on one specific framework. But we are at the stage that we can um, build on top of the framework. That's why we call it like a f uh, framework, a cake fuzzer, and add more. PHP frameworks, but also frameworks from other other languages. But what is important here that we 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 always focus on the frameworks themselves, not on the whole language and all of the applications. It's also possible to focus on specific applications. The 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 the, the, the extension part would be different, a bit different, but it's also possible as well. So it can be implemented in specific applications, even if you don't have uh, this framework or that framework in the in, in, in some languages. Bottom-up approach, like I told you, uh, focusing on frameworks uh, up to up to languages, uh, dis discovering obscure parameters. So the technique that we uh, incorporated from uh, WP Garlic uh, to detect um, override the super global global variables and um, and attack them during the execution of the application. This helps us discover very different you know, parameters, names, or just places where the user input is, is ingested by the application and then used for some actions. Um, so very recently, we implemented a context a XSS scanner, which uh, gives us a bit of understanding not only about like a flat, um, flat 
um, HTTP response, but also um, if the, the, the injection is actually in the, the tag part or it's, it's in the attribute or it's in the uh, like a craft because this is a different context as well. Um, this solution can also be used for manual tests. So whenever we, uh, like I told you, various different components are um, separate, so they, they can run um, uh, separately. And we can successfully run monitors that, that could uh, be executed somewhere in the background. And we can, we can run manual tests that, uh, that use the, the payloads that we had defined in the attack strategy. And the monitors will detect these uh, vulnerabilities if they are somewhere there. And, uh, well, I don't know how this is for you, but for me personally, I, I see the attack strategy is pretty simple. It doesn't require a lot of, uh, um, it requires some knowledge about regular expressions and a bit of uh, information about the structure of the strategy itself. But besides that, it's pretty, pretty simple. At least, yes, I hope so. And there are a few challenges that we faced during uh, during this whole research. And uh, first, first is the duplicated vulnerabilities. So Cakefuzzer detects a lot of vulnerabilities, but some of them are duplicates of our of already detected ones. Um, and this is something that it's okay on its own because for 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 whoever runs the the scan it's already a beneficial to know if this is vulnerability that can be exploited for many different endpoints, because this means that many different users with different privileges can exploit this vulnerability, or just from one specific. The severity of this vulnerability uh, changes in these two contexts. But we, we, we still need to improve the way we present it, because right now it's just one, let's say, flat list of vulnerabilities that we detected. Another one is um, the multiple uh, conditions that have to be uh, met to discover vulnerabilities. So whenever um, you, you see like penetration testers uh, discover vulnerabilities, especially like more complex ones, they not like search uh, well, maybe it's sim in simpler applications they are, but in the more uh, modern and more whenever the, 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 the developers are more aware of, of security, the vulnerabilities are not in plain sight, they're not just like that, but to exploit them, uh, they, they require certain conditions, like the configuration has to be set to this, there has to be user that has a name like this, and then a few others. And this is something that we, we, we still have in mind to um, basically detect this type of conditions to cover more of the application internals basically this is this is pretty pretty difficult challenge uh, to uh, to work with but uh, yes we, we are still struggling with this and this is uh, the, the, the third one is something that we recently uh, discovered so basically whenever we um, cover more more surface of the application and, and more like depth of the application with with our scans it means also more errors and this is mainly due to the attack technique that we used with the magic uh, array overwriting with uh, overwriting super globus with our magic array and uh, this is um, this is something that is pretty annoying because we, we, f we get a feeling that we get, get deeper into the code, but at the same time, the application produces more errors for um, because it doesn't understand well our magic array objects. So we are constantly working on this part. Okay, and now it's time for a secret, I have to tell you. Um, well, when I was preparing for this presentation, I was like, I had some initial versions of the pr of, the, of this presentation, and I was like super excited. Um, uh, I'm 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 very excited about this project. I'm uh, actually, you know, p partially li living it uh, in in our company, and uh, and I was I was super hyped. I I was feeling like, oh, cool! You you guys will have, uh, we will learn some really nice stuff. There is not a lot of things about interactive application security testing and so on. Um, but I don't have a lot of experience in presenting, so I educated myself, looked some articles, watched some videos and things like that, how to present, basically. 
And I stumbled up, uh, upon one video from MIT professor, how to make a speech, and he points out like two uh, things that shouldn't be at the last slides of the presentation. So the first one is just the slide with word questions. Apparently, this is uh, there's no value for you, and this is just a waste, wasted, uh, wasted place, kind of wasted time. We will have time for questions, so uh, that's that's not a, not the case. But the second the second thing is like the read more uh, if you're interested, and then like a long URL with uh, something that you have just uh, typed down. Moreover, you shouldn't, and 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 in the presentations I learned that I shouldn't thank my audience for. Uh, listening, because apparently this means that you guys are listening out of politeness and not out of curiosity about the topic that I'm presenting. So actually at this point I was laughing, because um, my last three slides of the initial version of the presentation looked basically like this. I had to learn more with some super long links, just a question and thank you for your attention. So. Um, yes, in this in this situation, I'm going to uh, recommend to follow the project because this is open source. Uh, it's called Cake, Cake Fuzzer. It's on GitHub. You can look it up. You can uh, you can contribute to the code base. Um, you can follow us on LinkedIn. And if you're interested in specifically in Cake PHP security, you can uh, read some research here. You have a QR code to all of the links that we that I used during the presentation. Are there any questions?